This is the 2018 Audi Q5, which of course is more aggressive than the older model. We have a big bonnet, aggressive bonnet, which hides under it a 2.0 TDI diesel engine with 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. The engine is connected to a 7-speed S-Tron gearbox, which is nowadays well known at Audi. We have a front, a big front air grille with a big Audi logo here. A Quattro inscription here because, because the car comes with a four-wheel drive system. So we are at the right side of the car, almost the same dimension as the older model. What is important to mention is that this 2018 Audi Q5 is 90 kilos lighter than the older Audi Q5. 17-inch wheels, alloy wheels from Audi. We have the Quattro system which is permanent but has already the newest technology adopted, a self-locking center differential which maximizes the grip. The fuel tank capacity is 75 liters. The ground clearance is 20 centimeters. Two inscriptions on the left Q5, on the right TDI Quattro. Actually, you don't buy this Quattro TDI for performance, you buy it for torque. There is another TDI version, 2.0 TDI engine with 163 horsepower and of course you have also the petrol option 2.0 TFSI 245 horsepower. In the lower part two fake exhausts the trunk is not power operated the capacity is 540 liters which is quite enough as you can see we have a big trawler here and you can also put another one on the left side also other many things can be placed inside it has sufficient parking sensors, which are quite useful because of the dimensions of the car. With more than 11 years of history and over 650,000 units sold in Europe, you can say Audi Q5 is a bigger and taller A5. You can also say it's bigger than a Q3 but smaller than a Q7, so in my opinion, right dimensions to categorize an SUV. Manufactured in Mexico at its second generation now, the new Q5 looks more aggressive and interesting both inside and outside, is lighter, comes with new technologies and features and more powerful engines. The version that we had on our trip was a 2.0 TDI diesel engine with a 7-speed S-Tronic gearbox and 4-wheel drive system, cruise control, driving assist system, heated seats and multimedia infotainment with an estimated cost of 52,000 euros. Next, as you already know, I would like to make an analysis based on four aspects. Price versus what you get and what some other options are. Who should buy this car? What is its audience? Good things versus bad things? And last but not least, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? More than 1000 kilometers drove in our trip to Carlo Vivari in Czech Republic. Being a SUV, the car is comfortable and spacious and you cannot compare this with the comfort you get in an A5. A lot of space for front passengers, a lot of space for back passengers and a lot of space in the trunk. It's not the biggest in the class, but there is no reason to complain. The inside of the car looks new. As said previously, a lot of things are changed now. Bigger and better MMI interface, new design for dashboard and buttons, better seats. The center console is more user-friendly. You get cruise control, air conditioning, heated seats, front and back parking sensors, voice command. The MMI infotainment interface works flawlessly, but in our version there was no module available for Android Auto or Apple Car.
competitors. 53,000 euros BMW X3. 50,000 euros Volvo XC60. 53,000 euros Mercedes-Benz GLC. 53,000 euros Lexus NX. 48,000 euro Infiniti QX50. Even if you can say that the competitors are better looking cars, the Q5 is here the best price versus what you can get package. Comes as standard with the Quattro, the space at the interior is definitely a point to mention and the features are not to neglect. The audience for the Q5? I would say families from the small to the big ones. It's not sporty, but you get a variety of engines and it is comfortable and spacious. As positive aspects I would mention, Quattro as standard. It comes standard with a four-wheel drive system, a big advantage for an SUV. It's comfortable and spacious. There are even bigger SUVs, but the Q5 is the best match in terms of space. Good engines and gearbox packages. Most recently, you can also get hybrid engines. On negative points, I would mention the exterior aspect. The design team made some progress, but I still think the exterior is a little bit outdated. Maybe the Q5 will get the new design from A4 or A6. And last but not least, it can get expensive. Depending on configuration, it can get really expensive. Let's sum up. Three days, more than 1000 kilometers in Carlo Vivari. Comfortable, spacious and quite economical. The Quattro transmission makes indeed a difference. The car is stable and really quiet at high speeds even if I would be tempted to say you do not buy this car for an autobahn adventure. Maybe for an off-road adventure. If you compare it with its competitors, it can easily take the lead as it comes with a good price versus quality and features ratio. But do not take it too serious as it can get easily expensive as a Porsche, which is actually not so appropriate.